Hello there. This is my first clip on chapter 18, your textbook, on the four characteristics of money. And I'm definitely going to test you on this. So it behooves you. Please make sure you um, know this. It is in your textbook. It's uh, page 590 and 591. Okay, so here's give me, let me give you a little advice. Okay, a little, little meal advice here. Let's say I ask you a test question that says something to the nature of please discuss you know, the four characteristics of money. Okay, how do you remember this? Okay, how are you going to remember this a month from now when you have to write this midterm exam on Saturday night at, you know, it's 8, 9 o'clock at night. How are you going to remember it? Well, what I would suggest to remember this, and also the next uh, clip I make, which will be on the functions of money, is some sort of mnemonic device, some sort of like little saying that helps you remember um, these four terms. Now, the four key terms that you need to know are portability, divisibility, durability and stability. Those are the four key characteristics of money. So the question says discuss the four. You've got to be able to pull out of your brain those four words and then give a little discussion, a little blurb if you like about them. So the way I remember it, and I look at the first letters of those four words which are P, D, D, S. So you can almost think of like a admonition against drinking and say something like people don't drink Smirnoff right so if you remember that then it should be no problem right? so all you have to memorize is, is that little phrase people don't drink Smirnoff gives you P D D S so therefore portability divisibility durability and stability okay Portability basically means that, uh, as a good characteristic of money, means that it's easy to carry around. Um, this is actually one of the reasons why we don't use like gold and silver coins anymore, because of course they're heavy, they're bulky to carry around in your wallet, and also people can steal them. All right, and a gold coin today is you know like one ounce gold coin might be like eight or nine hundred dollars American, so it's a lot of money have one little coin worth that much because the metal is so expensive. So that's portability. means money should be something that is easy to transport around, to carry around. And of course, today of course, we have other sort of alternatives as opposed to just paper money and coins uh, that make it very easy to, to carry money around. Like things like you can write checks, which are usually for bigger purchases. Right, like you don't go to McDonald's and write a check. Um, that would be kind of odd. I suppose you could. I don't know if they would take it. Um, but things like debit cards and, um, uh, well, uh, technically credit cards aren't money, but they sort of, well, they're actually loans. So credit cards really aren't money. As your textbook mentions on, uh, where is it, page 594. I mean, even a debit card is, is sort of like writing a check. Basically, that's what it is. So it's sort of like a checkable, checking, checkable deposit, if you will. Okay. Divisibility is just basically, you know, you want to be able to have uh, an easy way of making change, right? So obviously, with checks and debit cards, you can get it right down to the exact cent. You say, you know, eighteen dollars and twelve cents. Um, with coins. Of course, you have some options like quarters and dimes and nickels. Uh, this is, of course, one of the problems again with the older system of like gold and silver coinage. It's kind of harder to, if you have like one big gold bar, to break it up into different little pieces or you have to melt it all down. It's a lot of work. So it's a lot easier to have um, our sort of in our sort of modern monetary system to have money the way that we do. So it's easy to make change. That's basically what divisibility means. Durability means that you don't want money that um, sort of melts and destroys itself quickly over time. Your textbook uses this example about salmon rotting and going bad. 
So in other words, you want to have currency, that uh, money that lasts. That's what durability means. It doesn't spoil, it doesn't die. Um, yeah, and they're right in your book that when paper money sort of wears out, they just uh, can print new stuff. Okay. And finally, the last one is stability. And stability is really getting into the idea that you want to sort of maintain the um, value, the purchasing power of your money. This is, stability is actually one of the key sort of functions of a central bank. I, I know we've talked about central banks pertaining to the foreign exchange issue, right? The um, buying and selling of this, um, you know, yens, the foreign exchange, remember? Um, but the other big thing that central banks um, are worried about is price inflation. This is the general level of prices rising. When we say inflation, we don't just mean like the price of one thing rises. We mean the price of most goods. So the pro it's sort of like a preponderance of the prices are going up. So that's what we mean by prices. It's like a uh, price inflation. It means like a general tendency or general direction of the prices. And um, basically, can, can, I don't know if you can hear the kids screaming in the background outside. There's all these kids out there. What are you doing? Anyway, um, I'm not editing this out. So, anyway, so the other thing, of course, is that as you'll see in my late in my later videos, I'll be making relatively shortly, is that central banks, because you can create more money. Uh, this can be inflationary, right? Uh, again, inflation meaning general level of prices are rising. So in other words, the price on most goods that you buy are going up. That's, that's, that's the gist of it. And so if central banks make lots of money, they just run the printing presses, then this would cause inflation and it, and it undermines the stability of of the currency unit. That's why a lot of these central banks, like the Bank of Canada, or another good one, a good sort of classic example was the German central bank, the Bundesbank, um, was always known as sort of these uh, fighters of inflation, to keep inflation at maybe like one or two percent. They usually would have like little bands where they sort of keep the inflation rates like between 1 and 2% low to protect the stability of the dollar so that you don't uh, destroy the purchasing power. Because that's really the problem with inflation. right? It's like saying, let's say I give you a million dollars. Are you rich? Well, the answer is, of course, it depends. And like most things, I guess, at university, it depends on all these different assumptions you make. Is, you know, if a million dollars can buy you, you know, 20 homes, then yeah, you're pretty rich. But if a million dollars can only buy you a loaf of bread, then you're not really that rich. That's what they mean by purchasing power. So that pretty much concludes this clip uh, on the characteristics of money. So if, you're, if I ask you a question on this on the exam, and I'm very likely, very tempted to do it, you just think, people don't drink Smirnoff. So portability, which is easy to carry around, Divisibility, easy to make change. Durability means that your money doesn't disintegrate in your pocket and rot away in five minutes. It lasts, right? And then stability means that we're not having rapid hyperinflation that's destroying the purchasing power of your money. And that concludes my clip on the characteristics of money.